what size of container to use. And you see these are seed planted directly in here and you see this situation where some of these are little guys not big enough to do anything with and a pretty nice tree. This is a 60 cell tray and the 60 cell tray works great if you transplant at the proper time. But see if I transplant this right now that's exactly what I want. Once that once that tree grew oh another four or five six inches taller when I did that it's going to stay it's going to stay over there and you're married to stakes if I have to stake something it says I've done something wrong I don't want that rascal with the 60 cell tray you can leave them in there for a limited amount of time with the 32 cell tray and you have to be willing to do that too See, these aren't this, these aren't quite ready. They're the same age. These aren't quite ready. They're a little bit taller, but it's still a good, a good stout stem. With the 18 cell tray, yeah, they're just they're just prime right now. They're not any taller. The stem diameter is greater. When I look at a seedling, am I going to save it or am I going to pitch it? I look at stem diameter more than anything else. Tall, slender seedlings don't impress me at all. Shorter seedlings with stouter stems. What makes that stem diameter increase? As long as that top is rapidly extending up here, most of the energy that those leaves are manufacturing stays in the top of the tree. It's only when the leaves are manufacturing more sugars than the top needs and some of that energy is being translocated down through that stem, does the stem diameter increase and does the root system grow? Another reason for this, this spacing factor is that one of the neat studies that I, I stumbled onto years ago was a study, it was first done with um, red pine, Pinus resinosa by some guys in, in Minnesota. And they took the upper low, uppermost leaves, put a plastic bag over it, and then fed radioactive carbon dioxide into that plastic bag so that the carbon dioxide absorbed by those leaves was the, those sugars ended up being radioactive so you could follow where the sugars went. Well, all the sugars manufactured in the upper, upper leaves stayed in the top of the plant. None went down the stem, none went into the root system. When they, when they did the same thing with side branches, the sugars almost all went up here to the top, to developing buds, to developing cones for the falling spring growth. It was only when they fed the, the radioactive carbon dioxide to these lower leaves, almost all the sugars from those went into the stem and into the root system. Again, I, I sat out here on this, this, this perimeter or peripheral part of the nursery industry and one of, the, one of the ultimate paradoxes to me is the fact that nurseries sell trees primarily on stem diameter, what you call caliper. Caliper is an instrument. What you're really selling is stem diameter. All right. The main thing that causes the increase in stem diameter are the lower leaves on the lower limbs. Yet what do they all do? Cut off those lower limbs and keep them cut off. I mean, you talk about the ultimate shooting yourself in the foot, that's it. If you want to grow stem diameter in a tree, leave every lower twig, every lower limb on that plant as long as you can. Then after, after you, and what you're after is developing a stem that looks like a deep sea fishing pole that tapers from ground level all the way to the tip like what a bald cypress tree does normally and readily. On the other hand if you take those off what you often end up with are two sides what looks like a piece of pipe where the two sides are parallel. Well when those two sides are parallel as the wind blows all the force 
ends up right at the right at the base of the stem. Whereas if there's taper to that stem, then that you know the wind force or ice load or whatever it happens to be, it's it's forced over that that whole arc like a deep sea fishing pole. Once you've established those non-parallel tapered sides of that stem, then you can take off those lower branches and those sides will stay non-parallel. But if you take them off while they are parallel, you're going to have a hard time getting taper to that tree and real and strength to the stem. But it's it's the the lower limbs, the lower foliage that really are the main contributors to stem growth and root growth.